Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to another installment of Art Fennell Reports. I'm Art Fennell. Philadelphia, as you well know, is known for being home to historical events and sites, you know, like the Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, and the like, just to name a few. But, however, scattered all around the area where America's foundation was created are other historical sites created by individuals who made a difference as well, but for other reasons. Along with calling the city of brotherly love America's birthplace, you might as well say Philly is also the land of the free and home of the brew. Because you see, Philadelphia has been home to beer manufacturing for more than 300 years. And a familiar name in these parts is known as being basically one of the first to do so. The founder of Philadelphia, William Penn. You know, you see a statue overlooking Philadelphia uh, all the time. He built his own brewery back in 1680. He actually constructed his own brew house on his property and was known to use barrels of beer to actually trade with Indians in various business-related dealings. William Penn. Now, further proof of Philadelphia's place in beer history is here. As you can see on this marker, America's first lager was made in 1840 by John Wagner. He brought lager yeast from his native Bavaria and brewed the first lager beer in this city. And this act helped to spearhead the growth of industry as well as spearheading business in Philadelphia. So we're going to talk about the business of beer in Philadelphia. Joining me are two men who are pretty much experts when it comes to beer. Rich Wagner is a Pennsylvania-based uh, beer historian who has spent the past 30 years researching all there is to know about that cool, refreshing drink. And also, here's Don Russell. You're likely more familiar with his alias, though, Joe Sixpack. Don is a beer columnist whose uh, work appears every week in the Philadelphia Daily News, and he has also written a book entitled Joe Sixpack's Philly Beer Guide, a reporter's notes on the best beer drinking city in America. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. We do not have a glass to toast to your appearance <laughs> here, but that's okay. Now, you know what, let me just start with the last thing I said there, the best beer drinking city in America. Now, is that a dubious distinction or an honorable one? I think it's an honorable distinction. It's, uh, there's not a whole lot of in Philly's history that we were always the best of, but we can proudly say we got the best beer drinking culture going in, uh, in America. And a lot of that has to do with a history of brewing that is completely unsurpassed in, in any other city in America. Well, our job here is to educate and inform. And again, we learned something along the way, too. But I had no idea about the deep, deep history of beer in this city. William Penn, who we see on City Hall, was one of the first to introduce beer into this city. So, do you think people know anything about that? I'm not so sure if, they, if people do realize. I mean, I believe it was before he even showed up in Philadelphia that he was had plans for his first brewery. Uh, and really, that was not an unnatural thing to do in, in the colonial days. Uh, I mean, brewing was a part of daily life, and so it was no surprise that there would be breweries being built right along with the rest of the development of the city. Sure. Rich, uh, I guess this is an obvious question, but how do you become a, a beer expert? And historian, you have to drink a lot of beer, don't you? Well, um, you don't have to, but if you enjoy beer, uh, it, it helps. It helps the research along. Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and so in your years of study, thirty years of studying of uh, the, the brewing industry, um, how do we rate uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in terms of other cities? So you think of cities like Milwaukee as a as a beer town, or you think of Pittsburgh, even Denver, you know, all of these places. But how do we rate? Well, throughout history, um, New York has pretty much been at the top of the list in terms of beer production as a state. Uh, New York, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, generally in that order. But Pennsylvania's distinction is that it more often than not had more breweries than New York. So they were smaller breweries. Uh, we, made, we produced less beer than New York, but we had more breweries. Uh -huh. Well, let's talk about those breweries, because uh, there are 11 breweries. Um, there were at one time during the late 1800s uh, in Brewery Town. Yes. 
Uh, and, and we have some video that we want to we show. I want you guys to just kind of help me narrate here as we follow along. And, and Okay, here's Red, Be Red Bell now uh, that's Brewing the old, Company. That's the old Poth Brewery. This is the old Bergner and Engel Stables building that's uh, across the street from that's that. That's now a church now, I understand. Yes. Uh-huh. And this one? This, I can't tell what that is from uh -huh. here. Um, the... Um, that's, the, the, that's another portion of the, it. Now, this is uh, the City Park Brewery? The Bergdahl's City Park Brewery, 29th and Parish Street. Uh -huh, it's now uh -huh. condominiums. Now condominiums. They went from beer to condominiums. And it is the premier example of uh, brewery preservation in the city, mm -hmm. if not the whole state. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, some of these other ones here? This is, uh, what, this is part of the complex. There are four different buildings that were converted. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing about the Poth Brewery that's shown here is that it became the Red Belt Brewing Company for about six years during the, the heyday of the craft beer renaissance in the city. Mm -hmm. So you had an old brewery being turned into a new brewery. Wow. Well, and you know what? Um, you know, we drive past these buildings all the time, and they just look like normal cityscape buildings, it's you know? True. It's true. And, you know, one of the reasons why Rich recognizes these so well is that this guy spends his, his free time uh, digging around these places. Uh, he's been to hundreds of breweries across the state. Uh, and one of the reasons we know about the history of uh, all these wonderful sites is because Rich and, uh, has you know, led expeditions out there and has researched it himself mm. uh, and really crawled around in the old dirt and, uh, and brewing equipment. You know what? Um, uh, I keep wanting to call you Joe, and I might, I might do it from time to time because you are Joe Sixpack, your alias here. Uh, but that's an interesting term because people always use Joe Sixpack as the common guy. You know, ah, you know what? Even Joe Sixpack could, could, could do that. Um, Philadelphia kind of prides itself on that type of reputation, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, we are a beer, beer drinking town, and there's no more common beverage for the, the working man than beer. And it's a Joe Six Pack kind of beverage. And that's, yeah. that's where I get my name, but it's also, you know, where Philly gets its reputation. You were saying earlier that, um, you just said this casually, you said oh, there's a new place opening uh, not far from where we are right now, and they're going to have 500 different beers. Right. Well, that struck me. 500 yeah, different amazing. beers in one place? And that's not even the biggest. There's now in this state, uh, I think somewhere in the vicinity of 4,000 different brands for sale. And so we're seeing a total renaissance in craft brewing with hundreds and hundreds of different styles and flavors of beer. 4,000 different. The, the other aspect of that is the, the, the types of beer that are being brewed are no longer the beers that were offered by the, the largest brewers of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, Explain, in fact, educate me. In fact uh, the Dock Street Brewing Company brought out a, an all-malt beer product in 1985. It was made in uh, Utica, New York. And one of their missions was to raise the level of beer to a connoisseur level, uh, much in the same way you have uh, wine aficionados. And so they would, early, early on, they would emphasize the role of beer and food pairing and emphasize uh, recognizing all the different flavors of beer. And when they opened their brew pub at 18th and Cherry in 1991, um, their mission was to brew every style of beer in Michael Jackson's book, The Connoisseur's Guide to Beer. Wow, because, uh, you know, again, uh, all of these different styles of beer, I've heard you say the malts and the, the, the craft beer and the, the flavored beer, which, by the way, could a Joe Sixpack appreciate a flavored beer? Sure, absolutely. Or, or a beer with fruit in it? <laughs> I, th I think so. Uh, I think there's, you know, there's all these flavors of beer out there, and that, you know, you got to be able to find a beer that you like. And it, you may not want a fruit beer, but you're going to find something that and you what, like. And, and I, this is a question for both of you. In your opinion, because you're experts here, you know, what are you looking for in a good quality beer? What what must it have, regardless of the taste, because taste can vary from person to person. But what are some of the characteristics in this beer that you're looking for? Well, I think a lot of that depends on your mood, frankly. Was it hot or is it cold? Are you eating and so on? Uh, but to me, there, it, it, don't, don't uh, gloss over just the taste of beer. To me, what makes a great beer is something that tastes good. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if it doesn't taste good, it's not a great beer in my mind. If, if it tastes so good that I want to have a second one of them, then it's, it's one of the great beers in my mind mm -hmm. because I really want to drink it again. And if you would ask a, a brewmaster, I mean, they have something they call the flavor wheel. 
where you can evaluate things as nearly ob objectively as possible. And they have a whole uh, line of, of uh, questions there that they'll answer when they evaluate a beer. Uh, when Schmitz was still in business, you know, they would sit down and taste the beer before they put it out on the market. Mm -hmm. And they would assemble people from the lab, people from the brewing department, and sometimes even people from the, the bottling shop. And they would get everybody's opinion because everybody, as you said, everybody's taste buds are just a little bit different. This is the old Smith's. Um, yes, with the big clock tower brewery, at the top. Brewery here, which for a very long time, maybe even still now, but for a very long time, was the king, one of the kings. of. Uh, they, had, they had three breweries. They operated a brewery in Norristown, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And when they closed in 1987, it was the first time since 1685 that there were no breweries in the city. Wow. Well, you know, um, again, I'm, I'm learning from you guys, and I try to learn a lot about uh, many things. And, um, you know, I've, I've had wine connoisseurs on before, and they tell you that if you really pay attention, you can taste the fruit in the wine. And if it has a hint of vanilla or the woodsiness in it and so forth and so on. In beer, are you trying to taste the, the barley and the, the hops and the wheat or whatever? Are you... Are you, can, you, can you get all of that? Sure you can, but you know, there's a big difference between wine drinkers and beer drinkers, and that is wine drinkers tend to spit it out when they're done tasting it. Uh. Beer drinkers swallow it, and we <laughs> swallow it because that's where you get the full enjoyment. And that includes, by the way, the alcohol that's in beer. We gloss that over a lot of times, but let's face it, there's a buzz factor to beer, and that's one of the reasons why it's appealing. It's a, it's a social lubricant, and it, it makes oh. you, it helps you enjoy oh, life. Uh, no, I like that. I haven't heard that term before. <laughs> a social lubricant. One, one of the other aspects of this is you take a brew pub in the city like Nodding Head. They have a, a series of beers where they'll make the same style of beer, but they'll only use a single hop. Mm. And so that acquaints the customer with what that hop contributes to the flavor of a beer. And then in the next in the series, they'll use a different hop. Mm -hmm. And it really is an educational process, and it, it makes it a lot of fun. Talk to me about lager. Now, and, and I'll say this, that one of the mystiques is that you hear lagers and ales, because that's British, because they really are the, the king. Or go to Ireland, where they really know beer. Certainly not here in America, where they know nothing. Talk to me about lagers and ales. Well, there's two basic styles of beer, or varieties of beer, lagers and ales, and it has all to do with the way they were fermented. Uh, a lot of people think of a lager as y yingling lager. Or heavier. Exactly, too, right? but it's not. It can be, a, a, can be a lot of different types of beer within a lager category or an ale category. But generally, and this is a real big uh, generalization, Ales tend to be sort of a, are a British style beer, and lagers are a German style of beer. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the great divide in beer really ex extends back to. And so today we see all these offshoots of ales and lagers uh, all across the board. But within that, you know, you'll have pilsners and stouts and porters and yeah. India Pale Ales and so on. You, you showed that uh, the marker for America's first lager being brewed here in Philadelphia. One of the, the main differences is that that strain of yeast ferments at a lower temperature. Mm. And by fermenting at a lower temperature, the fermentation takes a longer period of time. Mm. Not only that, when you go to age the beer, the beer has to be aged for a longer period of time at lower temperatures. So just that aspect of the process gives you a whole different flavor profile. Right, and we're getting ready to go to a break here, but I just want to reiterate this once again. You mentioned uh, Germany. Again, you think beer in Germany. The, the British, obviously, beer. Ireland, I mean, come on. you got to think beer there. But does America even compute? Does it get lost in the shuffle with all these big names in beer? Well, it used to be we did. I mean, people used to laugh at American beer. They, they, they thought it was swill. And I'm talking about the big guys, the big breweries. People would not drink that beer and a lot of it had to do with just the cheapening of the product it's not the case anymore people around the world know what's going on in, in America if I can just throw one more thing uh -huh. in in 1878 Brewery Town brewer Bergner and Engel won the grand prize for their beer in Paris the grand prize yes and if you don't in think Paris. if you don't think that got the attention of those German brewers in Europe being beat by some guy yeah. from the New World uh, that elevated the status of American brewing sure. 
in the eyes of the world. Like the Americans beating the Russians in hockey, exactly. and the rest is history. <laughs> stay right there, and stay tuned. You too, as well. And uh, hey, while you're watching this, if you prefer, grab a glass and enjoy. We're taking a look at the city's rich history in beer. Brewing today and brewing tomorrow. You're watching Art Fennell Reports. We'll be right back after this. Okay, welcome back to the report. We're talking about the history of beer in Philadelphia, and it is a deep history, just in case you did not know, and uh, we have a couple of aficionados here. Uh, Don Russell is here. He's a.k.a. Joe Sixpack. Uh, you got to love that name. I mean, it's just perfect for Philadelphia. And also here is beer historian Rich Wagner, who uh, has been studying uh, uh, that finely brewed beverage for some 30 years or, or, or more. Um, and and I, I again, you know, I, I I say that, you know, beer like like most things, you know, is such a varied taste because there's so many different ones. Can you ever get through them all that you say, okay, I'm clear now that this is the one for me? Uh, I've pretty much devoted my professional career to doing that hard, <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure that it's possible anymore. There there was a time when I any new beer that came out, and it's my job to taste these beers, I figured I could be, get around to tasting it eventually. You can't do it anymore. There's just, yeah. just new beers all the time. It, it's a rite of passage. It, it's a cultural thing even because, you know, even for people who or aren't big drinkers, they'll say, yeah, you know what, they're just having a beer, they're just having fun and so forth. And, you know, I appreciate a good beer on a cold day. Uh, and so forth. I'm not an aficionado. I'm not going to go out and sample a bunch of different beers. But again, you know, if, if I'm at, particularly at a ball game or, or, or a cookout or something of that nature, it just doesn't seem right not to have a beer. It, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you say that the culture around this drink is significant here? Oh, absolutely. As, as Don said, it's like a social lubricant. And um What's interesting about craft beer is they're actually brewing styles of beer that have never been made before. Yeah. And another aspect is we have a, an archaeologist that actually finds the scrapings from jars from Mesopotamia or Samaria uh, from beer festivals there. And there are breweries that uh, Dogfish Head down in Delaware replicates those beers. Wow. Brings, brings ancient beers to life. Wow. Let's look at a, some more video of a couple of other um, uh, breweries here and get you guys to, to sort of talk about these. What's the one here? This is on Temple's campus. It's at 10th and Montgomery. It was the class in Nakad Brewery. Uh, three or four buildings of that complex are still standing. Part of it's used for offices and part of it is um, used for uh, mm -hmm. student housing. Uh huh. And uh, this is just uh, more video of that. And, uh, you Beautiful know, again, building. 1911. And they are. They're all very, very attractive uh, buildings as we, as we look at these. And I think there are some others that are going to come up here as well. This is the old Wise Broad and Hess Brewery. Uh, this is another brewery that came back to life as a brewery. And today it is occupied by the Philadelphia Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. And they make Kensinger beer. Kinzinger, Weisbroden Hess. That's German, isn't yes, it? Yes, it sure is. So we talked about the German impact, and as we know, Philadelphia has a deep German history here. This okay. is one that's a diamond in the rough. This is waiting for a little tender, loving care. It's the, the old Gretz Brewery. It's on Germantown Avenue. That chimney is a, is a landmark as you drive down Germantown Avenue, and I would just love to see somebody take this and restore this the way we saw mm -hmm. uh, the two other breweries. Sure, 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 yeah. And again, as you say, it's a landmark there. It does uh, stick up right at the top some, there. Some of your older viewers might remember this brand. It, it didn't go out of business until 1960. Mm -hmm. So, so was, I think this is the same picture that's just from, from way back. 1950, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you could just see it. It stands out even I got to I got to know the last brewmaster from Gretz and uh, had a lot of conversations with him, and he gave me a lot of insights into the okay. industry. Are, are there any others that uh, that we need to see? there have we gone through okay we've gone through uh, quite a bit of the uh, uh, of, of the beers there you know what's been interesting to me um, because there's so much competition and as we've talked about um, an old favorite made a comeback but it rebranded itself I'm talking Pabst Blue Ribbon now I remember you know my grandfather used to drink Pabst and and then it was like oh my goodness you're drinking Pabst 
get that out of here, you know? And then it came back under PBR, kind of a classy, colorful name, and now, you know, but, but Pabst Blue Ribbon is back. What is your, your opinion on the marketing and the branding of Pabst? Well, it's all about marketing and branding. It's certainly not about the flavor of that beer. It's just a brand name. It's actually not brewed. There was no Pabst Brewery any longer. It used to be made in Milwaukee, and that's long gone. And now it's just, a, it's just the label that's being sold and marketed, and it's a very savvy marketing campaign to, yeah. to reach out. But it's, the beer itself is, you know... The, not, other, the other thing is, this is a trend, though. Uh, these these brands have so much recognition, uh, and now they're starting to get recognition among younger an, a younger audience. Yeah. But there was a big brewery out in Pittsburgh called the Duquesne Brewery. Their brand was Duke. Now somebody has just rolled out the Duke brand. Iron City went out of business a couple of years ago. Somebody's producing Iron City in Latrobe. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of these brands, old brands, that have been revived. Well, there is a good way to get a good handle on your history and knowledge and to work on your own expertise of beer because Philly has a beer week. <laughs> okay, where and, and it's upon us. Where, you know, it, the whole idea is to get culturally up to date as to what Philly Beer Week is all about and, and you guys just uh, comment on that for a moment. Well it is Philly Beer Week and it's 10 days of uh, hundreds of events around the city, dinners, festivals, bar crawls, you name it, uh, happening all throughout the city and the close-in suburbs and it's really a celebration of America's best beer drinking city and as we've been talking about here the history of that is, is a big part of that uh, but it's it's just one of the parts of, of uh, uh, of our fine culture here, and that also includes the restaurants and bars that are serving it, the, the, the wonderful new local breweries that are part of it. I mean, we're going to see hundreds and hundreds of people out in the streets in, the, in these days okay. uh, drinking beer and having right. a great well, time. Well, there you have it on the screen there, Philly Beer Week, June 3rd to the 12th. And uh, if you need more information, go to phillybeerweek.org and uh, check it out. But always remember, drink responsibly and do not drink and drive. Hey guys, thanks. It's been, uh, it's been educational and uh, as I said, I wish we had a glass to hoist, but we don't. <laughs> um, but we'll have to remedy that another time. Thank you so much for sharing your insight about America's beer industry. Thank you.